Hey, 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 welcome to your weekly corner, Spady. It is me, Kieran, and I'm joined by Uma. Hello. And I'm joined by Yulia. Hi. And I'm going to be introducing this person for the first time on this recording. Never have I introduced this person three times before the internet absolutely crapped out. We are joined by lovely guest Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi. Work. Hell yes, it works. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Pray. People listening at home don't realize how much of <laughs> <laughs> all right we did it we did it all right <laughs> excellent um and today we are talking about something that we have uh, not neglected but you know we planned on doing an episode on this for a while and then you know other stuff in the world kept fucking happening um so we had to postpone it for a bit but we are talking about um our lovely neighbor poland and uh what happened in the most recent election and uh yeah and that's why we have Amanda on to, to, to help us understand all of these fine going ons. So, yes, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you, too. Uh, and by the way, it's not lovely at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, foreshadowing of things to come, I'm sure. Um, all right. So there was an election pretty recently, and I just want to do a quick overview of the results. Um before I, before we get bogged down into some details, which some things worth mentioning, um, turnout was seventy four point four percent, which I believe is the highest in modern Poland's history. Um, and then the big, the the winner of the election, the person, the party that got the most seats was our good friends at uh, PIS or uh, PIS, <laughs> as we usually refer to them, um, getting one hundred ninety four seats out of the. 460 seat CM. Uh, but that is not a workable majority. Their uh, assumed coalition partner of Confederatia only got 18 seats, uh, whereas the th- three other major coalitions, uh, um, Amanda can explain that in a second, um, have all basically stated that they are going to work together, if I'm not mistaken, and they, the three of them, have a workable majority. So it is presumed that Donald Tusk mm-hmm. of a Civic Platform is going to be the next Prime Minister. Uh, is there anything to, to add to that, Amanda? Well, first of all, the Confederacy, uh, they kind of, I mean... They probably would form a coalition. Some of their MPs, at least, would mm. form a coalition with Law and Justice, but um, or PIS, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to call those parties again. It's like uh, it, if if I should call them the, the, their Polish names or their English names, but um, I don't know. For Law and Justice, I think that's like a more appropriate name. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Also for con- confederacy, because it m- kind of, I don't know if it's deliberate, but it kind of feels like it is deliberate that they're called like <laughs> the same thing as the confederacy. It's yeah, like, they're, they're, they're yeah. like Polish state rights. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah g- genuinely, they're like a coalition of libertarians and nationalists. So mm-hmm. fun. Oh, God. <laughs> But uh, uh, quickly, because this is this is, I think, going to color the entire conversation. Can you, uh, um, as as succinctly as possible, explain this kind of like coalition system? Because I kind of put in the notes. I, I interchangeably refer to parties by their party name and not their coalition name when I'm actually referring to the coalition. And yeah, I was just wondering if you could uh, uh, quickly explain that. Well, okay, so um, in Poland, basically. I mean, here uh, in this election, we didn't even have like independent parties, really. Mm. So all of the five coalitions uh, were coalitions, except um, three of them, for legal reasons, didn't didn't participate as coalitions. They participate as, as singular parties, which is makes it entirely just confusing but um so for example the left um it's a coalition between uh, a couple of parties but mainly the new left and left together 
uh, otherwise known as Razem. Mm. Um, so um, that's probably confusing because all of those parties have left in their name. But um, the thing is, um, the the electoral threshold is um, 5% for parties and 8% for coalitions. Mm. And so um, this election has left decided not to participate as a coalition. So they just all <coughs> kind of um, used the um, the new left as their like default, um, I guess, party. Even though mo- a lot of the um, candidates and a lot of the MPs now aren't members of the new left. Same thing with the Confederacy. It's it, it would be below the um, the coalition threshold, um, but they they participated as uh, as just a single party because it's kind of a weird situation with them where the party itself is already kind of a coalition. Mm. Um, um, and they also have a party inside of that coalition, which is called the Confederacy of the Crown of Poland, which is, Poof. And, yeah, that's great. <laughs> they're monarchists. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. Um, they're very fun. Um, and uh, the third way and a civic coalition, uh, which are the two biggest. I guess now ruling uh, coalitions, they both ran as actual coalitions. Um, so they, um, the civic uh, coalition had obviously civic platform, but then a bunch of like small parties such as the Greens and a bunch of others. Uh, they're irrelevant basically. Yeah. Um, and the third way was actually like pretty much the only coalition that was actually like a coalition because mm. it was a coalition between uh, uh, the PSL, <laughs> not to be confused with the American PSL, mm-hmm. um, uh, which is the People's Party, I guess, okay. um, and uh, Poland 2050, which is... A very cool name. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Future uh, Poland. <laughs> they're the people who worked on Cyberpunk, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. No, they're they're like lib- basically the entire scene is like liberals, conservatives, and mm. there's some like fascists and and basically all of the coalitions except for the left. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's yeah. Um, and um and I mean law and justice was mostly like just law and justice. Um they um they participate as law and justice, but there were some minor parties involved. Um so like there's a couple of MPs from the uh, law and justice lists that aren't members of law and justice, I guess. So that's like mm-hmm. also um I guess important, but what? Why? Why do I mention this? Even mm-hmm. it's important because um, a civic, uh, like the civic coalition and third way, are almost definitely going to form a government together. Um, but they don't have like a clear majority, like a workable majority. So they need MPs from the left, and whereas the new left is like definitely like they already kind of agree to everything and they're like basically just um they're the civic platforms like servants at this point they're like completely mm. lost their in- independence um and they don't attend like they they, cl- they don't even claim to work for like a any sort of oppositional uh scenario um yeah uh, so they have like a majority of the left's mps but then there's the together party which um which has seven mps right and they might actually split from from that coalition and form their own thing hopefully okay. mm. but 
I mean, there's also like a problem with them where they might not. It's like it's up in the air right now. Right. And uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the is the the new left aspect of the the left coalition? That's that's basically like a successor from um, is it Wiozna, the the. The and SAD. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yes. So the Democratic I... Left Alliance back then, and then, of course, Viosna, they together founded the Nova yeah. Levitia, yeah. so the new left, yeah. I always forget how SLD sounds, how funny it sounds in yeah. English. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So... <clears throat> Okay, so then the coalitions might be split up. And that's interesting because like a lot of press that I read summarizing these elections does kind of treat the the coalitions as if they are fixed. Um, yeah. And it doesn't really help that like PIS and Civic Platform effectively ran as, co- if I'm understanding correctly, ran as coalitions, but those coalitions are effectively just them as parties. Well, like the, the, but- law and justice... We should we should say on a single name. Okay, I'm gonna switch to PIS. <laughs> yeah, um, PIS yeah. uh, ran as like a single party, but they had some other um, candidates from other parties on their lists. So they, mm. I mean, they effectively ran as a coalition, but then that coalition was dominated by them. So mm, yeah. Um, so then, like, a lot of press will just kind of, like, interchange it. Like, we'll talk about the coalition, but we'll use the PIS's name as the coalition. And it gets... Yeah, a, um, yeah, yeah and Civic Platform a, and Civic user. Coalition is is a, a more clear example because they're legally distinct. Um, I, and... I saw no English language press using the term Civic Coalition, though. Oh, they that's all weird. just went Civic Platform or PO rather mm-hmm. than KO would be the, the, the <laughs> abbreviation for the is that the coalition? Civic yeah. Coalition is KO. Yeah. Yeah. Um and the Confederacy brand. like we're a knockout. Right. Yeah, no, but the Confederacy is already kind of splitting, so um so that's like though they're not really splitting on party lines, clearly. It's it's complicated. Um, they're splitting okay. on being deranged lines. Oh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will talk about them in a minute because I I, I do want to talk about them. Um, but first things first, though, moving away from the election itself, I would love to just actually talk about the um, uh, the PIS. And I'm I'm sorry that I'm using all sorts of different languages, but this this is how they like the English language will refer to it, like. Uh, um, it's always PIS. It's never really law and justice. But then civic platform is translated for some reason. But and then the left isn't. It's always uh, Levitza or something like that. It's it's um, it's our fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then, um, but the PIS, the law and justice government, which has been in power now for almost a decade, um, I would be very curious to 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 hear. Amanda, uh, um, your kind of understanding of like how they came to power and like why they were voted for in the first place. Well, I guess it's important to note that they were already in power in the two thousands, and uh, they've been sort of in this endless kind of competition with um, Civic Platform, which is um, they've been like the main two parties for i think 18 years now um mm. and um and before then they were in a coalition together um so essentially it's just like two parties that are essentially so close that they were in a coalition back then and mm. they don't really have different um they used to be pretty much i mean it's it's difficult to to talk about this cuz there is a lot of um perceived difference but they don't actually differ that much in in many ways um 
So I would say the main difference is that right now the Civic platform is more socially liberal, though they're still not like woke or anything. <laughs> um, they're <laughs> I I don't know what how to describe that, but yeah, you, you know, like they're they support they nom- nominally support um, uh, civic partnerships for gay people, but like. Uh, but they don't really fight for it actively. Gay marriage, I'm assuming. Yep. No. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, but well, there there is a difference between like civic partnerships and marriages. It's like a step below that, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Doesn't yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter. The thing yeah, is, like, yeah. Too, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. And um, I guess law and justice is more likes to pretend that it's more social, you know. So um, there is a lot of oh, like okay. uh, weird um, kind of economic programs, or a lot, a couple, I guess. Uh, but the thing is, they're not really that good, and they're essentially. Just like um, they work on specific <clears throat> in specific cases, but like it, they're not that they don't have that much of an impact. And it, I would say they're still like definitely neoliberal um, as a party. And um, so, but they like to pretend that they are like the social alternative to the civic coalition or the civic platform. Um, Whereas this, um, a lot of the civic platforms. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah, no. I just wanted to name an example for this so-called like social policy that they have. Is for example, they would um, keep public funding low, but they would give like mon- monetary incentives in the sense of giving. I think around like. 215 euros or something I, I don't know the exact number to, for every child that a Polish family has um, to be reinvested basically in the private economy uh, therefore this is not really like a, like a this is kind of like a weird social policy in the sense of that you would not uh, want to increase public spending or like actually introduce welfare programs but you would give like private monetary incentives to families to be reinvested in the private market is one of like the law and justice um, social policies. Right. And it does help in some cases, but like it's clearly not. Yeah. 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 But like, um, I'm assuming very, uh, um, because we, we see that with like, was it Orban's government? Yeah. Does something similar where it's like, exactly. Yeah. We give money cash in hand <laughs> to, but specifically to Polish families, to straight Polish families. Exactly. And you better have fucking kids kind of thing. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of like the Hungary approach to this. Right. Basically, mm. if, uh, yeah, giving mon- money to uh, children, like uh, child rich uh, Hungarian families that are, you know, the future right. of the nation or something. <laughs> right. And they're also very protectionist. Um, they promote all mm. kinds of like national in- initiatives. And uh, back when they were first, uh, or I guess back when they were first elected in gov- into government, um, this time around, I guess, in, the, in 2015, uh, they were... Um, uh, they kind of had this entire campaign about uh, fighting mi- migration. Uh, so uh, it's definitely like a very national oriented um, social welfare um, kind of perspective. But again, it's not it's not very deep welfare. It's just like surface level. But it, I guess it works for some people um, on at least a perception level. Hmm. But it is the uh, uh, um, kind of the definition of like, it, it technically is means testing because even if it is just the one question of like, did you have a kid or not? Uh, that is still kind of, it's not universalist in its uh, uh, approach. Yeah, it definitely, definitely isn't. The kind of vibe I'm getting. 
Mm. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I you just kind of reminded me of the like the anti-immigrant stuff. I'm I'm reminded by something that got very quickly overshadowed by uh, the invasion of Ukraine, but the the shooting at migrants that were coming over the the Belarusian border and mm. like claiming that like Lukashenko and Putin had like weaponized <laughs> immigrants stuff yeah. and culminating in the Lou Bega uh, uh, um, concert for the troops. Oh my God. Yeah. That one. Wow. <laughs> what? A, pr- a proud moment in Polish history was the Lou Bega concert. <laughs> Uma, do you not Against remember the Lou Bega concert? <laughs> Why um, would I know about the Lou Bega? <laughs> what the fuck? So, uh, Lou Bega, uh, Bavaria's own, uh, <laughs> um, everyone forgets that Lou Bega is from Germany. Um, there did, you have your answer to everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that kind of explains a lot, doesn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, he, he did a, a, a benefit concert, uh, for, uh, um, the Polish troops and, that happened so closely. I think that was like January or something before the invasion yeah. happened, or like maybe just the year before or something. Um, that I think people just kind of like let when they saw that event, just kind of like let it melt into their mind that that was to do with Russia and Ukraine when it wasn't. Um, yeah. It was to stop migrants from coming over the border. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're before. still there, by the way. The, the crisis is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Oh, the migrants. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. saying Lou Bega was still there, and I was like, what? <laughs> no, no. Lou Bega's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Has someone told him he could go home yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just still <laughs> listing women's names. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, members of Ace of Base also performed, which is oh, of course yeah, that yeah, is yeah. not a surprise. Yes, the, the, the neo-Nazi band Ace of Base. Um, but uh, uh, Uma, for some kind of uh, um, Spain lore, last <laughs> uh, last ketchup, the band from Spain. Oh no! Uh, they were invited, but after finding out what it was for, they pulled out. Oh, thank nice. fuck! Hell yeah, Spanish! <laughs> yeah, last ketchup. <laughs> uh, which we are all now last ketchup fans. <laughs> um, all right, so getting back to that diversion uh, uh getting away from that um <laughs> there were two other uh, uh major kind of events that definitely broke like a um international perceptions of the the pis government which um like uh, broke its way into kind of like international media i should say which is uh the abortion ban and lgbt free zones to to use their terminology um yeah we did an episode ages ago on the abortion ban. I'm actually wondering if you'd be willing to talk about the LGBT free zones because beyond the title, which is scary enough as it is, I have no idea what that actually means in practice. Well, I would I would say that the people who created those zones don't know either, really. Because it's mostly right. like a mm-hmm. um, symbolic thing that some local governments did. Um, which still sucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is horrible yeah. to have like this official um, law that says this zone you cannot, you you don't exist in this zone, <laughs> um, even though mm-hmm. people still existed in those zones and like nobody was put into like jails for being gay or anything like that, um, or at least not just for that. Uh, but uh i mean it's just like a declaration of open hostility from the government but uh but they didn't they weren't uh entirely um i mean it, it, they just didn't have that much of an effect um practically um though right. um i'm also from warsaw i'm not from <coughs> any of those zones so uh i don't have any sort of um experience with them so i guess that's also a factor sure and um would you be able to also talk about the uh abortion ban because 
I remember the protests. There was also quite a few protests here in Berlin by the the <sighs> Polish diaspora. Um, but the once the the story kind of faded away, and I think in a lot of English press, and I think a lot of people who knew that these protests were happening couldn't tell you what happened after that. Right. Uh, well, they also faded into like distant memory here in Poland because nothing really happened, um, and um, and except for like the abortion ban was um, is in effect now. But and hmm. when I say nothing really happened, nothing really came out of the the protests. Um, right. So hmm. essentially, the sort of liberal leadership of the women's strike and other organizations just completely failed to capture any sort of momentum to actually put their demands into any sort of political um, political effect or um, mm. anything like that. There were some weeks where it kind of seemed like if they really wanted to they could take the government and just uh, do a revolution really but uh, honestly like that was the vibe on the streets but um, and most of the PIS voter base was all, also like on board with their demands because um, abortion bans are not really popular in Poland. It's just that a lot of the, sure. uh, a lot of the PIS electorate just kind of doesn't connect those two. Like, they don't connect that voting for for PIS means voting for this abortion ban. Um, mm. But, uh, but yeah, the, the leadership just completely failed to do anything. Um, and now there might be some changes happening, but they're still going to be like very slow because some of the um, some of the parties from the leader uh, from the winning coalitions kind of oppose abortions too. So, um, oh, fun! Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, uh, that wasn't. If so, when you say like this kind of faded in like the public's memory as well, it, it, is it fair to say that this wasn't an issue at all with the with this election? This wasn't a, a point being discussed, or was some party trying to bring up overturning the ban? Well, all of them. Well, all of them. The Civic Coalition and the Left did. Um, the Left did right. more, but um, and more. Uh, unapologetically um, mm -hmm. and they did bring it up but it wasn't it wasn't the top issues I guess but it wasn't at least for the left uh, but it wasn't it wasn't as major as it probably should have been mm. fair enough then uh, um, I guess I'd be uh, I'd be kind of curious to know what were the uh, um, what were the big topics of the election, if any? Like whether real problems or not, what were people actually like talking about? Um, that's a good question because that's <laughs> I I think there wasn't really any. It was mostly about how uh, PIS sucks, and that's it. <laughs> At least from the liberals, yeah. like they just dis dislike yeah. PIS, but they don't really have anything to offer um, substantial. I mean, I always find that very interesting. Yeah, in in Polish elections, because a lot of them already like at some point work together or basically come from the same Solidarność background or something. It's very interesting to see how Polish uh, elections are always around like the same kind of people, basically with Tusk coming back now. Um, and the main argument being, hey, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not Kaczynski, I'm not the piss party, being a good enough argument, basically. 
Yes. Um, even though, like, he was, I mean, he was voted out back then because of like a lot of privatization and a lot of push to uh, like towards neoliberal policies, etc. Well, if I remember 2014 correctly, yeah. Tusk managed to uh, um, technically not be voted out because he saw the writing on the wall and he basically left for Brussels before that could happen. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's where that's where you sent your fail. Oh, they are politicians, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they can then they can redeem themselves. It's just like Ursula von der Leyen. I hope she's not coming Oof. back. So. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I hope so as well. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the other, I guess, issue, yeah. like the the main sub issue of the issue of uh, PIS being bad, is, was that. It was kind of like an anti-corruption campaign from a lot of the, mm. or basically every uh, opposition party. And there is a lot of corruption, honestly. Um, a lot of nepotism, a lot of, um, yeah, corruption. Like the Polish state TV is essentially uh, PIS's um, personal a party TV, honestly, at this point, there is a lot. Of, it's comical at some in, in some areas. So um, I'm not really surprised by that, but at the same time, mm. it's it's not clear how they're gonna fix it. Other than we promise we're not gonna corrupt it as much as they did. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, because that kind of like you, you've talked about this already a little bit, but like that is, I think, a big question for for people on the left, like outside of Poland, of like, like what is what is the difference between Civic Platform and PIS? You've mentioned that they've worked together before, that they're like maybe not going to corrupt things as bad, but like, what are people expecting from like? Uh, like what we're presuming is like Donald Tusk being the new prime minister and there being like a civic platform led government. Is there anything to be expected? Well, uh, probably some things will probably change slightly. So for example, like the abortion ban might be um, lifted a little bit mm. after long deliberation with the uh, the People's Party. Sorry, I've, I I I just remember PSL as their name, but um, yeah, there is going to be a lot of conflict uh, along those lines. But I'm assuming they're going to settle on something. So small things like that are probably also going to be slightly more hostile to social programs but I'm not really sure what kind of programs they could really uh, destroy at this point like that they don't really exist so <laughs> um, so it's 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 very very much a case of just um, ruining a, a non-existent system uh, but um, at the same time, I guess they won't do as much because the thing about this new government is that they're going to have um, 240 MPs, something like that. And um, that's a working majority, but that's not enough to override the presidential veto. And the president is still from PIS for like two years. So they won't be able to do anything major for those two years. Unless something that's funny a, happens. A... <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause yeah, he's um he's getting on in years, that uh that president over there. Um because yeah, so my god, that's just sorry, the the those comments of like there's nothing left to privatize is uh um <laughs> is very uh, Eastern Europe, I guess, but still, it's just like <laughs> I'm just reminded of the like Alexander, like Alexander the Great quote of just like, "For I wept because there was nothing left to privatize." Kind of 
uh, 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 strategy, but like, God damn it. Um, right. So I'd actually like to start talking about, uh, uh, um, what you described as a, a deranged, uh, uh, party. Um, <laughs> well, there is um, levels of deranged, but they're all deranged. Yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> we're, we're doing the iceberg meme, but for like, uh, uh, various levels of confederatia politics. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so the Confederatia is, is who I'm talking about, and probably like the the only, um, I think aside from some other things we might mention later, this is one of the the only parties that may like broke into the English speaking world and English speaking social media because there was just a lot of like handful of like what the fuck moments. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I was. I was very particularly taken by, I, I showed it in a previous episode of the the kind of weird Roomba robot with a Confederatia <laughs> poster on it. Just oh, yeah. no. Going oh, no. The, <laughs> going around a supermarket. Um, so, I have yeah, a that, photo that's, with, that's kinda... with a very similar robot. So, yeah. Is it is it uh, uh, um is it the Carrefour cat robot? Yeah, Carrefour. I love him. Hell yeah, we all love yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Our regular co-host Nick took a took a hard stance against Carrefour, but um, no, no, this is we're now in the pro Carrefour coalition. Yeah, yeah. All four of us. <laughs> For the <laughs> Franco-Polish cat robot, I just I just hate the the robot is being instrumentalized by this party. <laughs> I know they're so cute. Free the robots! <laughs> but what's important to note is that he's also like a fanboy because he's he has <laughs> a masculine that. name, but he's his voice is like entirely feminine and like. <laughs> I don't I don't know why they made it like that, but oh. sure. <laughs> but I, then then it's actually even funnier that Confederatia were using it for their um campaign posters. That is it's well, like Ben think... Shafir- Shapiro watching that think video it... of the fanboy. Oh yes. <laughs> I don't think it was campaign poster, but anyway. <laughs> Let's uh, sell on some <laughs> other subjects. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think Kerfush is like the <laughs> the main subject of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> we can be. We okay. can, we can derail this whole thing. <laughs> right. I, I, but um, I wanted to derail it yes. again because um, there is a very fun part of... Um, there were a couple, and I say a couple because it wasn't just a single person. Uh, there were a couple of mm. people on the Confederacy, um, um, like candidate list uh, for the parliament, right. that are actual honest to god fly earthers. So, Ooh. all right, yeah. all right, dipping our toe in. Here we go. Right. right. Um, Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So I love that. I love, I love this, uh, 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 dip in because so mostly what I found from researching them is, um, a horrendous amount of antisemitism. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I found first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like the only, one of the only concrete policy positions I could get out of their Wikipedia page was like, they want to bring back capital punishment. Um, <laughs> So just a terrifying bunch altogether. Um, I think I have I, I have a quote here because the there's a relatively like relatively new leader um, because the which is forgive me here uh, Slavomir Mensen. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Slavomir, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the L with the line through it. Okay, I, I knew that. I knew that's the sound it made, but I fucked up. All right. Uh, <laughs> Menson, um, who's kind of like, I think is viewed as this like breath of fresh, fresh air and trying to like move away from the very openly Holocaust denying <laughs> founders of this party. But he has proclaimed, and I quote, we don't want Jews, homosexuals, abortion, taxes, oh and the European Union. <laughs> Which is a a great list of things. How uh, is that a fresh breath in the? <laughs> I, 
Um, I wouldn't say yeah. he's a breath for fresh air. He's more of a... <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, the only thing I think is worth mentioning here is that he's his face is just really smooth uh and that's the most <laughs> the most new thing about him because the former um leader of his part of the coalition because he's like a co-leader i guess um mm. janusz korwin he, he's like 80 mm. and his <laughs> face isn't as smooth i guess <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Fresh faces, yeah, fresh faces. We fresh need to, faces. We, we're getting the young people in. We're getting the yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I found I found out that one of the like founding members was born in like 1942. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, he he retired right before I believe Menson Menson joined. I, I think you might be. Sorry. I think you're talking about Janusz Korwin Mika, but. Uh... <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, what, yeah is, he was uh, born then. Is, yeah, no, I, yeah. I I I didn't yeah. know where he was born. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also have this weird member called Braun, which is a very uh, well. First of all, it's a German last name, but it's also very like uh, it fits. You know, if you're like uh, in this type of party and your last name is Braun, he's also associated yeah. with the AfD. Like he was. Um, <clears throat> and he's still giving lectures about he's like a journalist or some shit like that he's giving lectures about journalism in Wroclaw and yeah um, visited the IFD as a guest and has like deep contacts with them as well yeah no he's also uh, a monarchist uh, yes yeah, yeah exactly he's a weird monarchist dude because mm, I uh, <laughs> The only thing I read about Brown visiting the AFT is that, like, it kind of pissed off some people in, in his party because they're far right, but they're, like, but not the German far right. They were particularly, like, bad to us, so not them, please. Um, so, yeah, that's that's fair, but the I do love the mixture of a monarchist with, like, libertarian politics. Yeah. Yes, um, that's a that's a very Polish thing. That's a very Polish thing. There's, uh, there, so Janusz Korwin Mika, the founder of this party, that who's actually currently in like a little bit of a hot war situation because he's not. Uh, he was uh, thrown out of the party, I think, or left the party. I don't. I'm not sure, and uh, right. he's trying to found, find uh, he's trying to found a new party because um everyone blames him for the for essentially what was like a lost opportunity here because um like five months ago the the confederacy had like 15 percent of the vote in polls mm. yeah um and they only have like seven percent now mm. So uh, yeah, he's he's been blamed for 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 this drop because um, he started like this whole um, drama with um, age of consent actually, um, and he's oh, been like oh. yeah, yeah, and just like a lot That's of a... weird, extremely deranged comments that you shouldn't even. It, 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 like completely unelectable comments that mm. serve nobody, and um, so he he left or was kicked out. I don't remember, um, but anyway, he's like there is a conflict inside of the Confederacy now, and um, yeah, uh, age of consent is a topic within a libertarian party is never um yeah. never a great one. Yeah, so they're they're like anti-age of consent libertarians but also monarchists for some reason and very much in favor of like fascist parties so essentially just actually bad in all ways <laughs> they're just the worst like i cannot imagine a worse party that's fair yeah no it's a, a, a it's a, it's a kind of a, a very gross and toxic mix of just yeah, I really do love the the what should be in my mind a contradiction of just like yeah, libertarian politics. Every man is their own agent. 
there is a king though. They're <laughs> in honest, charge. It honestly <laughs> just sounds like Francoists. Sure. Like, yeah. Like, you know, weird Catholic fascists that also love a king and probably don't care well, don't <laughs> don't want the age of consent to exist. That that does sound like Franco. Like well, the, the followers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all right, so moving away from that and probably like one of the the, the last topic, but it's a big one, which is uh, um what is the left I- I- in Poland to do? Because I'm I'm very curious on uh, your assessment of the 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 coalition that calls itself the left. Um, but I I remember I remember Wiozna starting. I remember I remember some very good things in regards to like gay rights, but then also some kind of terrible things about how to handle like healthcare. Um, and then, and then there's Razem, which, re- like, just reading years and years ago, just reading Razem's manifesto, taught me a lot about like shit going down in Poland that I don't think I would have found out any other way. Um, so I'm just kind of curious. You've already hinted that you think Razem might break away, but what uh, is the uh, international? I hope. Oh, I hope they will. <laughs> I hope they will, right. but it's not. It's not a given. Um, I am, I myself, I am a member of Socialist Action or Akcja mm-hmm. Socialistyczna, which is, mm-hmm. which is not even a party, it's extra parliamentary. We do have some right. um, friends, comrades in, in together, uh, Razem. Razem. Why did I say it like that? Like w- how you pronounced it that's so weird I just, that's why i did right. that's why i use english names because whenever i just switch from english to polish to english it, i just kind of mm. mix up the accents and i hate that <laughs> um so that's why i just right. use the english names but um but yeah um well so first of all um i guess the left is a coalition again, as I said, and then the new left, which is a member of this coalition, is also kind of a coalition um, between Vyosna or Spring and um, and the former uh, ruling party that was the ruling party before the the whole civic platform and uh, and PIS, like mm-hmm. before they took over. Uh, in in the early 2000s and there are also like post communist you know like the post communist yeah. social democratic party um mm-hmm. so um so there are, and yeah so um the new left is essentially like very much focuses on social issues like being anti clerical being Pro gay rights, being uh, being pro abortion, um, mm-hmm. mostly mostly stuff like that. Um, their electorate is like one of the most anti uh, welfare mm-hmm. electorates. So this kind of um, tells mm-hmm. you how much of a left it is, um, and. Um, yeah, they're they're not really good on those issues, and they're also kind of irrelevant at this point because um, they're just going to be so marginalized in the government that they're just not going to do anything. And even if they weren't marginal in the government, the government itself is kind of marginalized by the fact that they have this president who's like entirely hostile to the to to the proposed government. So they're not going to be able to do anything with that. So probably what will happen is that they're just going to be blamed for everything. And, um, cool. and that's just bad. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, um, um, Razem has, it's kind of a mixed bag. Cause there is, 
there's actual like comrades inside of the party, but mm-hmm. there's also some other people in the party. <laughs> I guess <laughs> um, it's it's not even nominally a, a socialist party, and mm. uh, and it doesn't have a clear position on whether or not it should join a government or because it used to be like a very much um, anti-establishment party that wouldn't even go into a coalition with. Um, with what is now the new left, but in 2019 they joined that coalition with the with the new left, and since then they were kind of like focused on yeah we should basically abandon any sort of hope of independent politics, and um, yeah they're just not really independent. Uh, at this point, uh, hopefully they will mm. become independent again, but that's that's another issue. And um, yeah. I mean, if they will become independent, then they will possibly be able to like criticize the government at least from the left, which would be really mm. good. And um, I would also possibly join it because why not? Like it would be like the biggest. Um, left opposition party and it will actually be somewhat leftist, you know, um, mm-hmm. you could work with that. Whereas right. if they if they join the government, then that's like, they're basically dead to me. Like, <laughs> they're... <laughs> Fair enough. Because the thing is, they're not even needed for the majority here. So I don't mm-hmm. even know how how they would push anything to the left or anything like what's the point <laughs> mm. yeah so I, I guess the the some uh, uh analysis i was reading kind of suggested that uh levitza the 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 coalition is not even the um not even talking about rosem in particular but just like this whole coalition might be given um housing and education ministries uh, or like cabinet positions and like do you think that would be something that might make Rizem stay like someone in Rizem gets one of those posts because it yes. also seems like they could totally just give those posts to uh, the new left well yes they probably yeah I that could possibly convince some of the people in the leadership to stay to stay in the coalition, that would be a mm. bad decision, though. Because, sure, even if they got like, say, education ministry, even if they got that, um, they wouldn't be able to do anything because they wouldn't have access to finance, and so they wouldn't be able to finance anything. So the only reforms would be on the same kind of. Um, yeah, they just cannot control their own income, I guess, to those to those ministries. So mm. they would just they would have to deal with the already existing austerity in those uh, areas. So, like, and they get blamed for not fixing any of the problems. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and rightfully yeah, so. Because <laughs> I mean, at least if you're in opposition, you can criticize stuff, but like if you join a government, then that's not really a useful situation. Uh, you're just yeah. like a stooge for this new government that's definitely gonna be new liberal. Like it's not even a question; it's gonna be new liberal. Yeah, I mean that's that's the uh, <laughs> uh, um, my understanding of that. That's Civic Platform's whole thing is that they were the they were the austerity government and PIS was able to come in with, as you say, these kind of like, so like very shallow uh, uh, um, kind of welfare programs. And that was enough to convince people away because the austerity sucked. Um, But then I don't, I don't believe that like Tusk has changed. I haven't seen anything. He, he went to Brussels Mm -hmm. where like neoliberal is very much the, 
the name of the game so i can't imagine he's had like he's become like a nordic style social democrat while there or something no he yeah. well i guess the no. sort of um i guess again perceived uh difference is that mm. they're not gonna they're not gonna destroy like the social programs uh that you mentioned like the 500 plus program which is the um the money for having children program they're not mm-hmm. gonna fight that so i guess that's progress but um <laughs> but then they're the coalition members from the third way which by the way i forgot to mention this there is a, the third way is a coalition between those two parties that i mentioned before um but then there is the third way association which is a like a strasserite organization in Poland. And they're like oh, legally wow. a thing. So someone didn't <laughs> Google them. Uh, <laughs> like, someone at the, uh, the, 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 the office for anti-fascism is just like asleep, constantly <laughs> yeah. like defunded. Just like, hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, there are coalition partners in the third way, the center, right, third way, not the, stress right third way um they're they're like more even more um <laughs> neoliberal than they they are so it's like um i guess the civic co- uh, the civic platform changed but they got more neoliberal uh coalition mm-hmm. so so it doesn't really matter i don't know <laughs> Um, okay. it's not, it, I'm not, I'm not expecting any social programs from them anyway. <laughs> That's fair. Um, you did mention that you are, are a member of, um, I'm going to say the English name cause I cannot say the <laughs> Polish name, uh, a socialist action, um, which is extra parliamentary, which is great because, uh, um, at the end of the day, while I do love reading up about elections and figuring out what's happening, uh, um, fuck that nerd shit. What's happening outside of uh, outside of parliamentary politics, uh, where possibly the left can be probably more useful? Uh, is is there anything in Poland to speak on, on on that in particular? Oh shit! No, no, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um I mean so there's obviously like day-to-day things going on with like um trade union stuff and currently like the Palestine uh solidarity mm-hmm. campaigns which we probably have more demonstrations than Germany for once about this one specific topic because uh, in Germany it's very illegal, I guess. But um, yeah, so we've been there. We've organized a couple uh, of them. Uh, and uh, there is also trade union stuff, which um, the trade unions have be- have slowly um, just morphed into being like slightly more active i guess but um they're still like a very much very much a fringe case Mm -hmm. you know they're they're not really like a strong um political uh force um and besides that i mean my organization is in many ways, just focused on political education. Um, right. So we don't. Um, we're involved in in educating the already existing activists and organizing them. So in the future, they might do something more productive than uh, than what the left is do- doing currently or has been doing for the past thirty years or so. Um, which is probably like the most important part is just like not rushing things when there aren't really um, there is really isn't 
a situation. Like for example, um, right now the um, Razem party, they've just kind of, they're rushing into the government, even though like really they're not in a position to to do anything there. And so that's kind of been the case with a lot of the left. Like um, we just have to build up a lot of momentum before we can do, genuinely impact those kinds of um, uh, st- those kinds of positions and uh, genuinely do anything productive. Because again, um, um, I think a lot of the left is just afraid of losing what we currently have, which is nothing. So, um, I just I just think there there should be a lot more focus on just small groundwork uh, and grassroots organizing with 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 students and and workers and already existing activists and not really we shouldn't really try to push our agenda on the um on on the like main uh, political scene i guess like the sort of politics that we kind of assume we were talking about when we talk about like politics so like right. parliamentary stuff yeah. um because we're not in a position to do it and pretending like we are is just not gonna get us anywhere okay well that's fair um thank you so much for for all of that but i i do have to i do have to ask one last thing uh before mm-hmm. before we wrap and before i let you go uh, um which is again because very little of what happens in particularly this election in Poland broke through to English speaking media. Um, What I understand is that there is a politician in what I assume is the new left, but certainly in the left coalition called uh, uh, Wukash uh, uh, Livetka. Livetka? Livetka. Livetka. And um, he had, he's very muscular and he has some ads where he's also asking people to adopt a dog. <laughs> and I think um, since he's the only person on the left in Poland, based on my understanding, uh, and what social media has told me, um, have we tried doing socialism by being kind of horny for him? Is, is, is that at all possible? Or <laughs> uh, I don't think it's possible because he's oh, like the <laughs> worst person oh. in that coalition. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh, so okay, curious. maybe there's some gonna, other people who are, for example, <laughs> Anna Maria Zhukovska, who's like extremely militant uh, Israel supporter. So um, oh, sure. that's, that's yeah. one. She, I think she's currently in Israel, by the way, oh, um, yeah. or occupied Palestine, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, Litevka is like he wasn't a politician before and he kind of accidentally entered uh, the parliament. He wasn't supposed to. He just stumbled into politics. Yeah, and he doesn't really have politics. His campaign was like clearly just like oriented around him, his looks, I guess, and the fact that there was yeah. a dog next to him. Uh, on all the, the, the man who turned his... And yeah, the man uh, who turned his political posters into to please adopt this dog. It doesn't have politics. Is uh, not not necessarily surprising when you lay it out <laughs> all that like that. Right, but I mean, he's also like extremely on. Uh, like there was a lot of contro- controversy after he got elected, where he was like, people were finding out that he literally does not have any views, and he he also has some like weird. Um, history with he lost his driving license and then he was still driving around so i don't i don't really remember what was up with that but like yeah he's not good (laughs) oh man hot people are in a different world (laughs) you can drive without a license you can just stumble into politics this is crazy can i say something Uh, can i say something he's not hot at all 
Oh, what are you, right, all right. Uh, <laughs> what are you talking these, about? These are the opinions that I want. I don't know. I'm 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 <laughs> I'm going based on what people were tweeting. Uh, um, They're wrong. Why is it wearing Why is he wearing shoes in the water? In the like water. he's oh my wearing shoes. Right. This photo. Is so <laughs> oh damn. I didn't Wait, even I notice that. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is just a massive red flag. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and not the cool kind of red flag. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't do that in, in the coalition, like the left coalition. They don't use the red mm. flags. So. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I figured. I mean, yeah, it's that that is the thing that we have a lot in um, in Eastern Europe that any kind of symbolism that might like resemble any kind of mem like yeah image of communism mm. or, or so, socialism at least. I yeah. guess I guess in this election though um it was kind of an interesting this is completely minor but mm -hmm. um in the previous election the left coalition used like a purple to like slightly more reddish purple like I guess it mm -hmm. was kind of like a mm. bisexual flag uh, kind of <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Um Whereas in this election, they used like a very bright red, and so mm. I guess they're they're getting more red. Mm. Look at that! <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for coming on and uh, um, explaining all of this to us. Uh, um, important things about where political parties stand, what the left is currently doing or can't do, uh, um, that this guy isn't hot. These are all very important uh, things that we need to discuss. Uh, where can people find you online if you want to be found? Okay, so um, I guess I'm at Posadas herself on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and you should also follow... Um, uh, Oh gosh, it's in Polish, so I cannot really say it. Um, so <laughs> you can you put links in the if description. I say it in yeah. Polish, you're not going to be able to spell it. So um, I guess it's in my bio. Like the link to my organization is my, in my bios on every social media uh, website. Perfect. So yeah, it's access to Excellent. You should follow it, basically. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, right. Well, with that, thank you everyone for uh, listening. Uh, make sure to uh, donate to uh, um, Mutual Assistance Palestine. There will be a link in the description and we will catch you on the bonus feed. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.